Corin Shaw from the Centraland Foundation, and in this video I want to show you how you can set up everything on your machine to start developing the Centraland scenes. The first thing you need to have is Node and Node Package Manager, also known as NPM. You might already have this as it's a fairly standard developer tool, but if you don't, you can simply go to nodejs.org and install it from there. An alternative is to use NVM, Node Version Manager. That's a tool that lets you have multiple versions of Node installed in the same machine and easily switch between them. But since the central end just uses the latest version of Node, you don't really need that. The easiest way is just to go to nodejs.org, install the recommended version, follow the wizard with all the recommended settings, and that should be all you really need. Next, we're going to use the command console. If you're not very familiar with the command console, don't be scared, it doesn't bite. All you will need to do is copy and paste commands from the documentation. And if you run into any problems, you can always go to the Decentraland Discord group and they will help you out for sure. The first command we'll have to run is npm i-g Decentraland. This will install the Decentraland CLI. The Decentraland CLI is a command line interface. It's a tool that you use through the command prompt to create scenes, to preview them, deploy them, etc. The dash g on this command means that this is a global command. We are installing this package globally. And this means that this is available from any folder on your machine. So now with this, we can create the central end scenes. You can create a fresh new folder somewhere on your machine and then go there with the command console. If you type cd and the path, you should be able to go to that path. And a nice little trick that I always use is write cd and then just drag and drop from the explorer and that just completes the path as is without having to worry about writing it correctly. Once we're in the path of our new folder, we can write dcl init, and that will create a fresh new scene with all of the necessary files and all of the scaffolding and dependencies all automatically there. If you check the contents of a folder you just created, you'll see that there's a bunch of files, and these are all that really is needed to create a Decentraland scene. If you run the command dcl start, while standing on the folder that we just created, it will automatically open a browser window and you will be able to see that scene and interact with it. As you can see, the default scene is just a cube that spins and if you click on the cube, more cubes appear. There's a little bit of everything. It's a minor implementation that just showcases some of the basic syntax. If you want to edit this, you can edit it by opening the file that you'll find in src-game.ts. Now to edit this file or any other file in your scene, I highly recommend that you use an IDE. I recommend Visual Studio Code. You might want to use some other program if you're familiar with it, but make sure that it is a feature-packed alternative because there's a lot of things that you might get out of a good IDE like Visual Studio Code. Mainly it will show you whenever you make a mistake, it will show autocomplete options based on your context. What I want to say is basically just don't just use a notepad you will thank me later. So now if I open the game.ts file through Visual Studio Code, you will see that if I change anything on this code, it will be reflected directly on the tab that I have open with the scene preview. This is because the central end implements a hot reload feature, which means that whenever you change anything on the scene's code, it will automatically reload the tab and show things with the brand new code. So with that, you should have all of the tools necessary to start creating your brand new scenes. I recommend that you check out the awesome repository. There you'll find a bunch of different example scenes. You can use these as inspiration or even as boilerplate code. You can copy from them freely. You'll also find libraries that will also ease your development process a lot. And lastly, I recommend that you check out the Central and Discord server and join the SDK group. There you will find people who will be more than willing to help you out if you run into any issues. All right, so that's all I wanted to share in this video. I hope that with that you have all the tools you need, and I can't wait to see what you create with that. Happy coding!